Give God some praise this morning for who He is and what He's doing. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm so grateful, like Pastor Bruce said, you know, it was uh, a long three years of uh, taking me way out of my comfort zone. Um, you know, like that first song we sang, Oceans, that song I can relate to so much because I've seen how far God has taken me out into those deep waters right now where I'm not comfortable. You know, but He is guiding me and getting me through it as I continue to lead on the Holy Spirit to continue to guide and lead me. I have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about because God has ordained this right now before I was born. He knew where I was going to be. And I give Him all the praise and glory because none of us deserve it, right? You know, so Pastor Bruce, we've been in this uh, series for First John and Pastor Bruce preached last week on uh, First John um, chapter 1, 5 through 7, and today I get to finish chapter 1, 8, 9, and 10, and then jump into the first two verses of chapter 2. And you know, this message this morning is pretty much showing us about this nasty three-letter word that we all run and hide from, right? This nasty three-letter word that we don't want to acknowledge, we don't want to admit that it's there, we don't want to tell ourselves that we even do it anymore. Why? Because we're faithful followers of Jesus and we just don't sin no more. Mm, that's a lie, right? Sin is still in us. Sin is still in us no matter what, because it's one of the greatest mysteries of the Christian life is that although Christians are cleansed from sin, we all still sin. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. And these verses that we're going to talk about today deal with that fact that believers sin and to deny that sin is to deceive yourselves. So here's the problem. Sin can still be a reality in our walk with God, right? So what do we do when sin creeps in in our lives? What do we do? <laughs> the Bible teaches that believers, even though are united to Christ, still sin. And John makes it clear in this scripture. 1 John 1, verses 8 through 10 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and what? Purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar. Chapter 2, 1 and 2. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for our sins, but for also for the sins of the whole world. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus, for this reminder that even though that sin is still in me and is in you, that if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. You know, we sometimes we uh, we tell ourselves. Here's just a few examples, and you know, I want to give a quick story, if I may, take a few minutes. You know, because I was praying and asking God. You know, I need to I need to have like an introduction, a story to go with this message Sunday, and God just was not giving me nothing. You know, and sometimes when we pray and we ask God for something, be careful what He gives us. Friday night, I come home. I have an 85-pound American Staffordshire dog. She's a big dog, but she's stuck in her own ways, right? Friday night, I come home, and we were gone for a few hours, and I get home, and she had went to the bathroom all in my house, peed all over the floor, the tile floor. Not only was it on my floor, but it creeped under my entertainment center that weighs about 600 pounds. So it's just me and my son, Jaden, and he, he's, he's fit. He's 14. He's in good shape. So I needed his help to help me move this big entertainment center so I can spend 20, 30 minutes cleaning up this urine on my floor. Not what I wanted to do on a Friday night after I had been gone all day. So I get that all cleaned up, right? I go get the mop pads on the top of our armoire in our kitchen. And somehow, I love my wife, but she likes to stack things up real high and hide things in the back. So as I was reaching to get these uh, Swiffer mop pads, I accidentally knocked over a jar of blackberry jelly. Oh, no. It made quite the mess. Glass shattered everywhere. Jelly went everywhere. So now I have cleaned up urine. 
I had said some few choice words to my dog that I'm not happy about. Then I said some few choice words to my wife about putting a jar of jelly where it did not belong, and then I dropped it and shattered it and had to clean that up. Well, you think that would be all cleaned up good? No. As I was moving the armor back after I cleaned up the jelly and glass, one of my dog's toys was stuck under the armor. So when I went to push it back, the whole thing tipped over. Now I'm sinning. I'm cursing. I'm so upset right now. My son comes out of his room. Dad, what's going on? It's not like you to say these things. What? No, it's not. So I took my dog's toy, flung it across the house. It hits the entertainment center that 600 pounds and knocks over my glass crystal vase. I don't know. At this point, I just want to go hide in my room and not move or touch nothing. So as I now have to clean that mess up, and now the entertainment center mess up, now I'm about three hours in on a Friday night, cleaning, glass, mess. So I get my flip-flops on from outside the garage, and after I've mopped the floor, I've cleaned everything, what do I do? I had my shoes on when I went and took the dog out, and she went to the bathroom. And yes, I stepped in dog poop and tracked it all through my house on my flip-flops. You can't make this up. So when I was asking God, I need a story to give to bring this message. I think it goes with it. God, what can you give me? Oh, he gave it to me, all right. Friday night till about 10 o'clock in the, in the evening, continuing to clean my floor of my house. It was one thing after another. And this message was a reminder to me that even though I follow Christ, I'm a believer in Jesus. I try to do the right thing every day, all day. I am still a sinner in need of God's grace and mercy. I said some things Friday I haven't said, and I couldn't tell you how long. I yelled and screamed at the top of my lungs, which I don't do no more. But sin still creeps up in us. So what do we do when that does? What do we do? You know, when, if we lie and tell ourselves we have no sin, right? We deny that if we deny that sin is even an issue in our life, we continue to do it. If we deny that sin and call it something else, like we are born this way or it's not that bad or, you know, it wasn't as bad as so-and-so's sin, you know, it wasn't that bad. We deceive ourselves by telling ourselves that we don't sin or other sins are worse than ours. You know, it, I don't know if this is only me or not, maybe. Here's another one, how we deceive ourselves. We keep blindfolds on when we see our own sin, right? But when we see someone else's sin, we've got these huge binoculars, right? We're like, yeah, I see that sin. I see what he just did or she just did. But when it comes to our sin, no, we don't, we don't want to see it. We want to hide from it. We want to keep it in the back and act like it never happened. Right? But we're going to see a reality this morning. First reality is that sin is still in us. A second reality of it is that we deceive ourselves and lie to ourselves about it. But some positive realities is that the God we serve, He is faithful. Because it tells us in verse 9, right? We have an advocate with the Father Jesus. He is faithful. He is faithful. And there's some other scriptures that we're going to take through the Bible this morning. If you have your Bible, you can open it. If not, it's going to be on the screen. It's the NIV version. You know, when we confess our sins in our prayers, He is faithful and just to forgive us. But we must remember that sin is essentially displeasing to God. When we are forgiven by Jesus Christ, God's mercy, as we trust on Him for our salvation, the penalty for sin is spared to us. What we deserve is hell, but God spares us of that penalty. In verse 9, it tells us John is talking to believers, not to unbelievers. He's not talking to unbelievers who sin. He's talking to us as believers, that if we sin, that He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins if we confess those to Him. But it's those unconfessed sins that go unnoticed that we don't confess to God. You know, in Celebrate Recovery, um, we have principles we go through, one through eight, you know, and, and I really, we, during my step study this last week, um, God was giving me some words and, 
you know, God doesn't really give me visions in, in my sleep or dreams, but man, going through my step study this past week, he did. And he put these words in my heart of focus and discipline. And I look at these words, God, okay, what are you telling me? Focus. I've been focused for the last three years. I, I, I've, I've been disciplined and I'm doing my studies. I'm reading my Bible. I'm reading books, things that I've never done. I'm writing papers. God, I'm being disciplined. God's like, no. In, in our principle seven in Celebrate Recovery, it says, reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and what? Prayer in order to know God and his will for my life. So if I'm not self-examining myself, if I'm not Bible reading, if I'm not in prayer, how am I to know the God that I serve? How am I to confess something to a God I don't know? That's why it's important for prayer, Bible reading, because without prayer and Bible reading, we won't know the Father. We won't know His heart. And I want that to come clear today, church, that we must pray. We must read our Bibles. And when things go wrong in our life, like it did me Friday night, four or five events that boom, boom, simultaneously kept happening, even though I sinned during that time and I got angry and I cursed, I had to do self-examination before I closed my eyes that night and say, God, I'm sorry, that is not me. And I heard back, don't worry, my son, you're forgiven. There's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Joe, for confessing to me tonight your sins that just happened. That's church is what this message is about. And we see in Romans 7, for I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. Right? But we see He is faithful to confess your sins. For the first time, you will be forgiven. He's saying to Christians, if we confess our sins, He's speaking to the ones that He calls children, little children, brothers and sisters in Christ. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just. You know, the Bible tells us that there will be a day when God not only has removed the penalty from sin from us, as He already has, as we trust in Jesus Christ, but in glory. He will remove sin from us so that we will be like His Son. And until that day He does that, He will continue to be displeased when there is sin in us because it is not what He made us to be. And that is why we confess our sins. He did not create us to sin, but He created us to be able to have a relationship with the Son and the Father, to confess our sins to Him when we do, so that we can be forgiven for them. You know, I look at this other um, possibility Forgiveness is possible. Mm. John uses that phrase, my dear children. This expresses his love and authority for us. It could be translated in other uh, translations as darlings of mine, little children. It is rather unique in its usage here. It also highlights the importance of what he is about to say. Verse 1 has two halves. First, John desires that we live on a higher road. He writes these things so that we can find victory over sin. However, he understands that living in the world filled with trials, temptations, and deception that we will sin. So our advocate calls for justice. He personally paid the debt of our sins in full. His payment was such that it is sufficient to cover the sins of all the sins of the world, not just mine or yours, but every sin everyone has ever done or committed. But it is only offered to those who come to Him. Hear that. If you don't come to Him and you don't have a relationship with the Father, you're not going to be forgiven. You know, it reminds us all through the Bible, from beginning to the end, how faithful He is, and that forgiveness is possible. He is the rock. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. He is the rock. 
His works are perfect and all His ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is He. Amen. And then we see it in Psalms 33.4. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all He does. It's telling us right here, church, how faithful God is and that forgiveness is possible. Even though we are sinners, we are still in need of Christ's mercy and grace. Amen? But here's the good news, though. Our comforter, our advocate, has paid for all the debts we've ever done. All we have to do is accept His atoning sacrifice for our sins. So church, are, are you willing to do that today? Are you willing to accept His atoning sacrifice for our sins? Because the realities are, Sin is still in me. We deceive ourselves. He is faithful, but forgiveness is possible. You know, as, as I go through this walk where I'm at right now and where God has got me, I know that I'm a wretched man. And it tells us here in Romans 7, 24 and 25, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then I myself, in my mind, am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. You know, as I was preparing for this message and, and going through it, um, yeah, like Pastor Bruce says, man, I meet with Pastor Bruce quite often during the week. He's helping me with PowerPoint. I've never worked a computer in my life up until two years ago. And he's challenging me, um, PowerPoint, um, helping to tie the message together with the PowerPoint. And I'm learning. It's a learning process. But, you know, I look at all the things like I'm a big sports fan. I love sports. I can't wait till 3 o'clock today when the Bucks beat Detroit. Sorry, Detroit fans. But I look at... All my sports history that I know, I know where athletes come from, what schools they go to. I know their statistics, baseball and football. But God has placed on my heart, but do you know my word like you know statistics of baseball players and football players? And he, the Spirit has convicted me to want to learn more, that the Spirit will continue to guide and lead, lead me. And I love this series that we're going through, Living in the Light. Because when we're put in a room that is filled with darkness, all it takes is one, one speck of light to bring light to that room, right? And, but if we're in a room full of light, not one speck of darkness can cover that room in darkness. So I want to live in the light. How do we do that? We continue to pray and ask God to help us walk in the Spirit. Help us not to do things that we don't want to do, even though we're still going to do them. So I pray this to God. God, as you got me where you want me and you're taking me out in deeper waters, I know you won't allow me to sink. I know I have nothing to fear. I know I serve a God who is bigger and more powerful than any sin I could ever commit. As long as I confess and bring it to Him, He will forgive me. You know, I, I got really down on myself Friday night for getting upset like that and acting the way I did. And I was really ashamed, especially when my 14-year-old son came out of the room asking me, what's going on out here? He thought, I, I don't know what he thought. <laughs> but I'm human. And I reacted a way that my old sinful nature crept back up in my life. So what did I do with it? I prayed, God, forgive me. God, that's not me. You know that. God, help me in the next time if something like this happens again. Help me not to be like that. Because even though I'm a sinner, yeah, I follow, I follow Christ. I'm a believer. He, a passionate follower of Jesus, not just a fan of Jesus. A follower of my Lord and Savior. So I have to walk how He walked. I have to ask God to help me love my neighbor how you love them, God. Help me see others how you see them. Because I don't see them like that way in my flesh. I need the Spirit to lead and guide me to see people how He does. I need the Spirit to lead and guide me to love others how He loves them. 
that is not in my nature. But God is working on me and He's helping me. He's bringing me through it. And the ministry that me and my wife lead here on Tuesday night, Celebrate Recovery, it is a not just a program, it's a way of life. It is a way of life. And I believe anybody in ministry, any ministry leader in the church should go through a 12-step study because we all have issues that we deal with, every single one of us. Because a 12-step helps us to know who we are. A 12-step helps us to get rid of denial, get rid of rejection. A 12-step helps us to write out a, 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 you know, what we did, our fourth step, an inventory of our lives and the, all the stuff we did to put it on paper so we can give it to God and get rid of it. Then our fifth step tells us that now we confess it to God, to ourselves, but now we got to confess it to somebody we trust. Who is that person you trust in your life that you can confess something to besides God right now? Think about that. For me, I couldn't trust nobody in my life. But today I have people in my life that I trust, that I can come to them if I'm in need for help. Because we need connection. We need other people in our life. You know, and it helps us deal with our character defects, our shortcomings in life. I had so many character defects in my life, I, I didn't know what to do with them all. Too many. But God has worked those out of me. I never knew I had abandonment issues. No one's ever left me. But I did through a 12 step and celebrate recovery. I learned that I was abandoned at 14 years old when my mother passed away. I never, growing up my whole life, I never felt abandoned, but I was, and I was doing things from an abandonment issue. This is what Celebrate Recovery offers. It offers a way out. It offers healing. And it offers those who are far from the cross, near to the cross. Because it's a 12-step Christ-centered recovery program that deals with all the stuff in life that we deal with. And you cannot begin to heal if you keep denying the things that happen in your life. I had to get real. I had to get transparent. I had to tell some things in my life that I swore I would take to the grave. But through a study and through fellowship, and like Pastor Bruce said, Tuesday night, it is a discipleship. We disciple others. And those we disciple then go back and disciple. It's disciples making disciples which is what we are called to do. So if that's you, I don't know if that's you who, uh, you could even say, I'm not like that person, and still come. We still love you. Come check us out Tuesday night. We have great worship. We get loud in here. We preach the Word of God. We hear a lesson, a testimony of somebody who's been through Celebrate Recovery 12-step, who they once were, the process of God bringing them through, and then who they are today. You know, Celebrate Recovery offers so much, so much. And like I said, and I'll continue to say it, all people in leadership in a, in a church should go through a 12-step Christ Center recovery because you will learn. Sometimes it'll hurt. It hurt me going through it. I didn't realize how bad I really was or the things I really had to change. But because of that, I'm healed. I'm healed through my 12th step. I'm healed by confessing these things to God. I'm healed because I confess it to a brother in Christ. I would not be the man, husband, father, brother who I am today if it wasn't for Celebrate Recovery. We do 12 step programs that it's a study. It's not just you go through it in a couple weeks. It takes six to eight months to go through one. But in that six to eight months, if you learn nothing else and, and all you get out of that step study is a relationship closer to God, amen. Because that is the goal, is to bring those far near to the cross. Those who are still sinning, not confessing. Those who are still living an unrighteous life and doing what they want to do, but calling themselves believers. So church, I just want to uh, end in prayer and I want to thank you for listening to me. I want to thank you, Pastor Bruce, for giving me the opportunity to preach this message. If I can invite the worship team back up. Um, we'll play this last song 
And uh, if you need prayer for anything, if you need the power of God to break any stronghold, to help you with any sin that you're doing, if you need God to help you confess it to Him, please come up to the front and, and, and be prayed for. Amen? When we talk about sin sometimes, we only think of these things. Gosh, it was anger, it was lust, and they get born. Uh, most of the church rarely sees that when put to point out. The sin that we don't like to deal with is the sin of not accessing yourself. The sin that I have thought got a rather spirit spirit that does people all the time. Uh, the sin of unforgiveness for the soul of God is so, uh, it's what you have to think of. Some of us hold on to sin for decades and decades. Some of the hurts, some of the pains, some of the issues were instilled when we were children, teenagers, and adults. Some of us have gone through broken relationships where the pain of that broken relationship is instilled in us a quick, easy spot where we end up sinning in some other way, coming back. So as we stand together and I lead us in prayer and then the worship team sings, we're going to sing Waymaker. <laughs> I love that song. Because here's the truth of it. Don't care what the issue is. Don't care what the chain was. Don't care what the problem is. He is Waymaker and free. Would you stand with me? Father God. Father God, first of all, I just confess corporately that, Lord, it's too easy for your church to hold on to sin. Too easy. Too easy. We hold on to wrong attitudes. We hold on to unforgiveness. We hold on to animosity. We hold on to pain that should have been given up. Lord, we hold on to stuff. Mm. And Father, where we're quick to recognize certain sins, Lord, there are others that we are still with. Points more. So then, Lord God, we ask your Holy Spirit to speak to us. And if there are those things in us that we just need to let go of, that deed would come. Claim them away, man. So, Lord, if you need to speak to us, speak. Challenge us. Jesus, then. Jesus, then. If you want prayer about anything, you would be out. Come forward. Stay with your arm. Raise your hand. Somebody will find you. Go through. Amen. 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 Thank you.